Okay, big one tonight, guys. Just wanted to do kind of an overview of this uh, bushcraft. Um, basically, what I've been using this for, it's a kind of a bushcraft kit, but it's uh, it's sort of a a pack I've been carrying with me when I go out hiking or when I'm up at the property for the weekend, um, just hanging out, you know, doing some light camping, kind of quasi car camping, but you know this this has a lot of different stuff in it when i'm at the property it's kind of like a utility bag that's got all kinds of you know whatever i could possibly need in it and when i'm out hunting uh i've been carrying this you know kind of as an emergency if you get stranded out or you get lost you know kind of pack and it's got a lot of stuff in it it is a little on the heavy side and i'm going to be kind of open to some, to some suggestions if you guys have them on what stuff i have too much redundancy with and what I need to ditch. There's an awful lot in here, and uh, I'm going to open it up here in a second. But just broad strokes on the outside, you know. There, I've got it. I've carried it in two different configurations. When I'm just out for the weekend, I just have a canteen, uh, a two quart canteen strap on here, onto the eyelets there, and uh, you know that does all right. You know, just to sling it over your shoulder and walk around a little bit with it. Um, I've got the Mora Bushcraft Triflex attached to that. Okay, um, obviously that can come off on my belt. Um, I've got um, a slightly modified, you know, um, Alice Pattern GI individual first aid kit. And on this side, I've got a one quart Nalgene bottle. Uh, and I, we kind of looked at that kit in one of the other videos. It's, uh, it's the Nalgene Oasis Canteen with uh, issue cup and issue stove and some Esba tablets and some water purifying tablets in there, basically. So that's the broad strokes of what it is on the outside. Oh, one more thing. On the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, there's uh, another compartment here. They're both the same camo pattern, so it's kind of hard to tell. This is, uh, it, it's called a hump. And what it is, it's a nylon bag originally designed to hold a hydration bladder in the space between your back and, an, and a large Alice pack, like in the frame. Uh, and basically, I've kind of repurposed it here. Um, I've got a, a rain poncho in there, a, a USGI poncho in there. Um, and so that kind of protects it. You know, I can set this down on the ground, and this is super heavy duty, heavier duty than the the actual uh, sustainment pouch there um, and uh, it protects it pretty well you know from getting snagged on things and it's relatively easy access so but what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna lay all this stuff out I haven't decided whether I'm gonna lay out the uh, contents of the first aid kit or not because I did add some stuff and take some stuff out of it but stay tuned we're gonna open this bad boy up it's probably take me about 10 minutes hang on all right well that is a fair amount of gear laid out uh, as I said I really didn't uh, get the IFAC out and I didn't get the poncho out uh, it's basically USGI poncho is be my main rain gear and uh, basically the IFAC still has all the heavy-duty bandages it's got a couple of band-aids in it it's got some bug spray at it it's got the chapstick removed um, it's got some moleskin added basically um, but let's get into this stuff now I'm just gonna go I'm gonna get a little lower here standing on a chair to get it all in but you know there's quite a bit of redundancy here in this stuff so let's start right here in this corner we've got um, the main water bottle obviously the Nalgene Oasis you know and we got the cup there and the cooker okay and to go along with that inside the kit there's a stainless steel spoon and one of the heavy cover lids okay I got a pair of work gloves you know could come in handy um, this is um, I believe a check wool scarf it's the sportsman's guide selling them under which is a great little piece of gear that I discovered I like it a lot 
you know you can wear it a bunch of different ways because it's a tube scarf you can wear it you can actually just pull the whole thing over your head and it is, is it's kind of like a buff basically or you could just wear it as a scarf it's a little bit short okay um, but it works really well got the obligatory uh, bandana there multi-function item okay I've got um, a hooded poncho just one of the cheapy Walmart plastic ones you know in case I need to give one to someone or if I'm not alone um, you know something that I like to think about in my kits is you know what happens if I'm out with someone and I pull out my super high speed you know USGI poncho and they basically don't have anything well this would be a first thing that we could do but there are other things we could do if there are more than one person uh, we'll get to that in a second okay so as I said this is a primary water container and a lot of times when I go out I don't need more than a quart okay but if I was out for an extended period of time you know when I go backpacking a quart it's not very much and you're hiking a lot you get to a water source you don't know where the next water source is so what I did is I picked up a couple uh, at different times a couple of these platypus bottles and then platypus bottles are all well and good this is a underneath them a Swedish shoulder bag it sold as I'm not sure what it was used for uh, it's about maybe gas mask size um, I'm not sure what it was ex what it was used for um, but that's another, you know, a little bit of Euro surplus. It's, uh, the idea is, is that these, when they're in, uh, filled up, would fit in there and I could just sling it over my shoulder. Uh, there's a little spot here. I had some water purifying tablets in there at one point. I must have used them or moved them somewhere else. So, that is, gives me the capability then to carry three liters of water, which is a big difference. You know, and because I can also, if I'm using the tablets, I can be doing three liters at a time, so that's good. Uh, a little, little bit uh, more robust capability, as they say. Okay, got a little two tool pouch here. This red tool pouch usually comp contains this uh, sighting compass. There's a bag with a couple little nibs of uh, glue stick there. Okay, and. Uh, Little Gerber one trip uh, one double A flashlight, carabiner to a pretty loud whistle, and a cheap Chinese ferro rod. Okay, with its paint coating still intact. It's very similar to a lot of the ones that I use. Okay, over here we got some bags. Uh, I got three 55 gallon drum liners, which you know, get back to this here with the poncho. If you need to make rain gear for someone you can make it out of a poncho usually when you need rain gear it's not really the best time to try and make it but you know if mine was in use and that was in use and somebody else needed something you could do that plus we know of all the different uh, uses of a 55 gallon drum liner you know 1001 uses you know you could make it into a little ground cover for when you're sleeping fill it up with uh, some brows and make yourself uh, a little uh, impromptu uh, sleeping platform okay in this bag this is something this goes back to where I was using it for turkey hunting we got a uh, these are I think they're 13 gallon basically it's about the size of a kitchen bag but they're compactor bags it's something I found at Walmart which is great because it's the same basically the same thickness as the drum liners but it's about kitchen size Okay, and you know, I take it out as a sort of a game bag. If I had gotten a turkey, I could fit a turkey in there and uh, you know, got some zip ties along with it. So, I mean, that was just sort of a relic in there. I mean, that could come or go. If I was going out turkey hunting again, I'd probably throw it in there because it's a useful thing to have. Okay, moving around this side here, we got a couple of the large heat sheet blankets various different times and I fully understand that you know once you get those out of there they don't go back that size so obviously those ones are completely unused you know I've got uh, other ones elsewhere that you know the thing I like about the heat sheets is they really are reusable compared to the straight mylar you know they true they don't compact down to that same size but you know they definitely are reusable uh, because they're a lot more flexible and they don't tear as easily okay I kind of to go along with that, all of these sole bivvies. It's the same material. It doesn't breathe really well, you know, they get kind of mixed reviews. 
Uh, I haven't really played around with that. Hopefully this summer I'm going to get that out and uh, get some actual experience with that. Some people love them, some people hate them and say run, but you know, it's it, it, it needs to be small to fit into this kit, so you know, between those I should be able to make some sort of shelter. That, and I've also got the poncho, don't forget that. So all these items, you know, could make a fairly decent impromptu shelter. Okay, we've got the Bushcraft Triflex on the outside. Backup Blade is another one of those brand new Mora companions that basically doesn't get used as long as this doesn't break. Okay, I've got one of the Smith's Hones that I described in the other video. Let me pull this out here. Okay, so I think this is the fine side and then this is the coarse side. It's a great little field tool. Uh, for touching up a Scandi grind, I found um, granola bar I must have had in there since last time I was out. Some earplugs. Found my little turkey head net that I was wearing. Um, let's see, moving back around here. I got uh, to go kind of along with this, the sleeping bags and stuff. That's a wool watch cap. Um, just, uh, you know, even in summertime, it's good to have a, a cap, a cap when you're sleeping, you know, that's where all your heat's escaping. And if you wake up chilly, if your feet are cold, they say, put a hat on. That's what that's there for. And also I keep the, the blankets and stuff inside it and it kind of protects them a little bit. Okay. Right here, got a little tea kit. Uh, it's got some, just some sugar packets, some tea. And it looks like some of it got out. All right, so I'll have to take a look at that. Um, that's been in there a while. I've used it a couple times. I must have had a, a rupture of sugar or something like that. So, and to kind of go along with that, those are some coffee packets. Basically, uh, these are those M&M minis containers, the jumbo ones you get at Walmart. You know, my daughter loves those M&Ms. But once they're empty, uh, in one of the other videos where I was talking about the percolators, I said a lot of times I use freeze-dried. And it's true, for a kit like this, you know, I'm not carrying a percolator or any of that nonsense. So basically, what this is, freeze-dried coffee, creamer, and sugar in a ratio that I figured out. And I put it in there, and one of those will make a nice, decent size amount of coffee in there. So, I mean, it's just basically for comfort, mainly. Uh, if I was really suffering from hypothermia, you know having a warm liquid is going to be key so you know and it's good for morale basically so I've got a couple of cups of coffee and a couple of cups of tea so now down here this really is where there's a ton of redundancy yeah I didn't even realize until I was pulling it out just now how much redundancy we got here you know you got your absolute last ditch fire making method you know I saw these things picked them up couldn't resist Played around with them a little bit. It's basically a little six inch road flare is basically what it is. Um, there's two of them in here. And you if you can't start a fire with this, you're in real trouble. Okay, so you got that. You know, then you some more conventional stuff. It's a couple of those lighters, some matches. Okay. There's some waxy balls, I call them. What they are is it's uh cotton balls that have been sort of uh soaked in gulf wax. What you do is you take the knife, cut them about halfway through, peel them apart, yeah, and they're really hard. I mean, these things are, they're like mothballs from hell. But uh, you cut them about halfway through and then peel them apart, and then they'll take a spark from a ferro rod, and they'll burn for about 15 minutes. And they're homemade, and they're cheap. You know, gulf wax you get for 2 or $3 for a pound of it, and cotton balls, I mean, you get 100 cotton balls for a couple bucks. And you can just make as many of these as you want. You sit down and and uh, get yourself situated, and you make a bunch of them. Usually at the beginning of each season, I'll make a ton of those, and then I don't have to buy the the commercial ones. But of course, I do. <laughs> you see here, I got some of these wet fire. Ooh, this one's crushed up. These two are pretty well intact. This one's kind of powdered. Okay. So, basically, um, you know, I saw those, I couldn't resist them. You know, uh, this is a little sort of tinder tin that I have that this stuff goes in. 
All right, I got some uh, cotton lap wick in there, a little uh, Fresnel lens down at the bottom, a little plastic one. Um, and then elsewhere, just kind of floating loose in there, kind of like uh, emergency, like things you kind of forget about until you're really in trouble. I got a couple of these kind of floating around in the bottom of the bag, you know. And then, you know, all of that, and then you see I've got a little hole in the top of this film tin here. So I can make char cloth if I needed to out of basically a bandana or any cotton clothing I happen to have, you know. Um, so you got that. Then over here, this is a more, this, and this is where the redundancy gets kind of ridiculous. This bag here was one that I was actually, yeah, doing stuff with. You know, I found this, um, this fungus, and this is not chaga or true tinder fungus, but it's a shelf fungus that I found a, very fortuitously. It was off the tree lying on the ground, and it was pretty well dried out. And sure enough, I found that if I struck it with a ferro rod, I would get, it basically is like a solid lump of char cloth. It'll, it'll just smolder and give off a whole bunch of heat. So that was something I actually found in the field. This black bag is full of charred lamp wick. Okay. Then here's some lamp wick that is basically just charred on the end. You know, just out practicing stuff. Uh, what I really like, I really like going out and here we have a, using a magnifying glass. It's a pretty decent glass magnifier here. Picked up the Ace Hardware. It's not small, but I really liked uh, starting fires. You know, that's, I mean, that's as primitive as I've gotten, really, is using char cloth and, you know, primitive stuff like, like the, the fungus here. Um, I was really surprised how much I really enjoyed, you know, trying to get a fire started. And, and you know, I mean, it was, I was never in a survival situation, but I think it was, uh, it kind of kindled something in me, no pun intended, to get out there and, you know, be out outside, outdoors doing stuff, you know, and it added a little challenge, you know, no challenge here with this stuff, but, you know, it was kind of, uh, kind of interesting. <laughs> you see redundancy, a couple more of these wax balls here, um, but, yeah, so it's fairly heavy. When I go out hunting with it, I don't use that shoulder strap if I'm going to be tromping through the woods. I've actually got, you know, a pistol belt and a, and a harness system that, you know, this is designed to work with. And that works really well. You know, I throw it on, I really don't feel it. Because while this is pretty heavy and bulky for, you know, a slung over your shoulder kind of haversack, this originally was supposed to be like a haversack kit, and it just turned into something a little bit more monstrous. And... I fully acknowledge there's probably some stuff that I could ditch from this, but putting it on the the uh, harness system, and basically the the weight basically goes away. Um, so it it was uh it's a lot easier to carry with the harness system on, and uh, it didn't really weigh me down much at all. You know, I'm used to when I go backpacking. You know, obviously I carry even heavier stuff. You know, I'm carrying a tent. I'm carrying a stove, I'm carrying a mess kit. So in some ways, certain aspects of this are pretty minimalist. Like you have to make a shelter out of this stuff, you know, or, you know, this is your cook kit. For me, that's minimalist, you know. Um, there's a lot of redundancy. Like, you know, we didn't go over the cordage here. You know, obviously I got the oblig obligatory 550 cord and, you know, some jute twine. I don't know. I question the jute twine because... I think I need to get some bank line or something because I understand you can use it as a tinder, but it kind of sucks as rope. I mean, I'm sure I would find uses for it. Um, oh, one more thing. I'm generally known as a light stick hater, but I was at a party a couple summers ago and uh, the people throwing it had a case of these that they had gotten somehow from the military. These are the actual military like high speed uh, light sticks on a string with a built on little shield so that you can kind of douse them if you need to, if you don't want to be seen. And uh, I don't know, this one's expired. I think that's how they got them, is they were expired. These things, you know, they're like 15 bucks each. And I, we were playing around with them all night, but 
I don't know that I would pay like 15 bucks or 10 bucks or whatever the heck they cost for them. Um, and you have to buy a bunch of them. Let's see. Yeah. Expires 11 10. I don't know if you. Yeah, it's not going to go to it. Yeah. Expires 11 10. But you know what? I bet it still works. And I'm really not a fan of light sticks and kits anyway. So that's. That's lucky it's even there. So. Yeah. It's a bunch of stuff, basically. Um, sometimes. I'm rooting around in there trying to find something. Normally, what I'm using it for is the fire stuff, you know. Uh, so far, what I've what what I've taken out of this kit has been fire stuff, um, and also when I go out, you know, there might be some small additions to it, you know, like if I'm if I'm hunting, uh, the GPS might be in there, although the GPS might be in my pocket, you know, and then that is backed up by the navigation equipment. I might have a map. I've got a lot of maps for a lot of the areas that I go. I get they had a, a fire sale on the US some older USGS maps. They were a dollar a piece. So I picked up all the quadrangles around where I live. There's a couple I couldn't get, but you know, a lot of the places where, you know, like where the property is, stuff like that, like I've got quadrangles all around there. So I might throw in the the relevant one for where I'm going. Um so yeah. Uh let me know what you guys think. This is a bunch of stuff. So um let me know if you think there's any weaknesses to it. Uh, I didn't... Oh, I got a Gerber saw here. Uh, <laughs> kind of random comment. Um, I was just trying to think if I had missed anything. But, yeah. If you have any comments, things you think I'm missing, things you think I just need to ditch, um, let me know. Thanks for watching.